Okay, I just discovered something incredible for this project. I, this is gonna simplify my life a lot. There's this really cool thing in Star Wars called a scomp link. It's basically a computer terminal built for droids so that they can access data. I wanna build one of these scomp links and even have the center of it rotate. But to make it even better, I want it to be a functioning USB port for my computer so that when I go to plug something in, it will detect the presence of the flash drive or whatever I'm plugging in. There are going to be a lot of technical challenges I'm going to need to overcome. I'm not sure what kind of material I want to build this out of, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get that rotating piece to work. To answer some of these questions, I'm going to start with a 3D model, so let's head over to the neighborhood of Make Believe. I started out by modeling that center rotating piece. The tricky thing about this project is that that piece needs to rotate around a static center where the USB port is going to be. So I know I need to find some sort of bearing so that that outer piece can rotate while the inner piece remains still. Next, I used some reference shots from one of the movies to design this faceplate. It's kind of interesting because the scomp link shows up several times in the movies and the TV shows, but it sort of looks a little bit different depending on which movie it's being used. I say that so that you know I'm not trying to create an exact screen replica of what is in the movie. This is sort of my interpretation of what I saw from the reference materials. I'm going to attach that faceplate to a front body piece and then I'm going to also have a back body piece where a motor can be attached to to spin the rotor. To connect those two pieces, I'll 3D print sort of a mid body piece that I'll be able to screw those parts into. I've gone ahead and I've 3D printed a prototype of that rotor piece. I don't have the machines here available in my shop to machine something like this out of aluminum, so I've asked my friend Winston Moy for some help. Winston is an amazing hobbyist machinist and digital fabrication guru. He took a look at my model and gave me a couple of pieces of feedback to make it easier for him to machine this. Winston is also going to be releasing a video about how he set up this part and machined this on his desktop CNC machines. I love watching Winston's videos. He's sort of like the Bob Ross of hobbyist machinists. His videos are really calm and soothing and you end up walking away having learned something. If desktop machining is something you're interested in, go check out Winston's channel because it is full of awesome information and he makes really cool projects. So here's the result of Winston's hard work. This turned out so good. I am thrilled with how this looks. It's made out of aluminum, which makes it look really authentic from the movie. And I just think he did an amazing job. Thank you so much, Winston. I also wanted to have the face plate as well as the front and back body pieces machined out of aluminum, but I didn't want to insult Winston with such a trivial task. So I sent those parts off to Send Cut Send, and I'm really excited to use them in this project. I had to make that front face out of aluminum because that's what it looks like in the movie. But for the front body and the back body, I wanted to do something different. Do you remember when I built my CO2 laser cutter? I used a material called aluminum composite material or ACM when I put the panels into that machine. I want to use that material for the front and back body pieces. It's sort of like a sandwich. The middle is made out of like a high density plastic and it has a really thin skin of aluminum on each side. So I used that ACM material to make these parts. Before I can start solving the problem of how to spin that rotor piece, I'm gonna assemble the parts that I have already. I've got the main body pretty much assembled, so hopefully you're getting an idea of how this is gonna work. The next piece I need to figure out is the central hub where the USB connector is located. I have an idea of how I'm gonna do this, but I haven't actually tried it to see if it's going to work. So I may not know until the very end when I put everything together and write some code whether or not this is gonna work. So hopefully I can kind of sort out all the bugs and get this thing working. So I need to be able to detect when something's plugged into the, the USB port on the center of this thing so that it can start rotating. So I figured that I would need to get some sort of proximity sensor like this 
and this would tell whether or not um, like there's hand in front of it or not. And then I need to like kind of pair it up with the USB port and I'd have to fit both of those little devices, whoops, I just dropped it. I'd have to fit both of those devices inside the rotor and then I'd have to write some code and detect whether or not someone's hand is there. But as I look closer at this USB port breakout board, I noticed that the shield has a separate pin than the ground. Now I just assumed that the shield is always connected to the ground pin, but they're actually independent from one another. And the cool thing that I just discovered is that when you plug a device in, that shield gets connected to the ground. So that is how I'm going to detect whether or not something is plugged in. I don't have to worry about proximity sensors or distance sensors or anything like that. I literally just have to read the state of that shield pin and I can use that to determine whether or not something's plugged in and then spin the rotor. I'm super excited about this discovery because that's gonna simplify this project a whole lot. As you can see, I've got both of these breakout boards connected together. My plan is to plug a USB cable into the back of the device and have that USB functionality just pass through to the front. So when you need to plug in a flash drive or whatever, it can just be plugged in from the front. All right, here is the moment of truth. I gotta see if this little USB connector will slide into here. Oh crap. Okay, it fits in there, but unfortunately it sticks out too far. I didn't cut these slots back far enough at one point I did want this to stick out, but I changed my mind and so the holes won't line up when I put the little screws in. This is like my third or fourth one of these that I've printed. They take like five hours each time. So I don't really want to print another one. So I think I can just take a Dremel, like a little cutoff wheel, and extend that little slot down a little bit further so that that sits flush and that the screws will line up. That's really frustrating, but that's how it goes in prototyping. Sometimes you get it wrong. The good news is though, I did nail the dimension of this little needle bearing that I'm gonna be using. I The first one I did did not really fit on there and this one fits perfectly. There's like zero play in there and it's really smooth. So I'm happy with the dimension on that. So that's good. Perfect, so now that's flush and the screw holes will line up. So that was an easy fix. That actually worked pretty well. So it's a good thing I tested this little stepper motor before moving forward because it is definitely too slow. The gearing ratio just doesn't allow it to spin fast enough. So instead I'm gonna use just a regular DC motor. This one is also geared, but it's rated at a much higher RPM and it's plenty strong to spin the rotor. So this is what I'm gonna use. So this is where the motor needs to mount, but it's missing two holes. So I printed this little template this little template will just snap into place and then it tells me exactly where the holes need to go. Unfortunately, it looks like these socket cap screws are gonna interfere with the sprocket. So I have some countersunk screws that I'm gonna swap these out for. Here's where I'm at. I've got the sprocket installed on the motor and I've got the pulley that goes around and spins the rotor. So I did a belt calculator online to try to get the right ratio so that my 200 millimeter belt would be a perfect fit. And I even left myself a little bit of room in there so that the belt wouldn't be too tight. But my calculations apparently weren't that accurate because the belt is really just too tight. It's putting way too much friction on that sprocket and the motor is having trouble spinning. So right now I'm using a pulley that has 92 teeth and that's too big. I thought that I could maybe just have the motor run for a little while and kind of run everything in so that it would be a lot smoother, but that didn't seem to work. So my options are a little bit limited here. 
I am heading out of town tomorrow, so I really have to finish this project today. I have a little bit of time in the morning, but really, I really should get this thing done today. So my options are maybe I could stretch the belt a little bit, but this GT2 timing belt that I'm using is really designed to not stretch. So I don't know if that's even gonna be an option. So the other option is to reprint the pulley with fewer teeth. So right now I'm printing two more pulleys, one that has 80 teeth and one that has 84 teeth. So both of those diameters are quite a bit smaller. So hopefully that will loosen up the belt. If this works, I'll be really happy because I can finish this on time. Bad news, I overcorrected. The 80 tooth pulley and the 84 tooth pulley are too small. There's just no way I can take up the extra slack that I created. So unfortunately, I have to do another three hour print and I'm printing two more. The reason I'm printing two at a time is because that's the most I can print on my resin printer at one time. Um, but the cool thing about resin printers is that there's no penalty for more items on your print bed. The amount of time it takes just depends on how tall the tallest object is. So really it's in my best interest to fill up the build plate as much as I can and print as many different variations as I can so I can figure out which size is going to work best. So right now I've got a 90 tooth and an 88 tooth pulley printing on my resin printer. So fingers crossed, uh, one of those is work. It's getting later in the evening, so <laughs> this is gonna be a long night to get this thing to work. All right, the 88 tooth and 90 tooth pulleys are done being printed, and I think this is gonna be much closer. The 88 tooth pulley was a little bit loose, so I'm gonna try the 90 tooth pulley here. The way this works is I've got this little needle bearing that slides in here like that, and it just kind of fits right there, and then this slides over the top, and I've gotta line up the sprocket with the little motor shaft here, and that slides on like this. So that seems like a much better fit and I'm not putting too much friction on there. So let's go ahead and test this. I'll plug the motor in and see it, if it spins. There we go. Cool, yeah, so that's gonna work great. I think um, it's a little slower than I had hoped, but you know what? It's working at this point, so I'm just gonna go with it. I drilled a little hole in the side of the rotor here and that will accept a little set screw uh, that will lock it to that rotating hub in the middle here. So I've gotta line up those holes and then I can tighten down my set screw. The last little ornamental piece here, I 3D printed this little copper, it's almost like a castle nut type of thing, but I need to just glue that on the face there and that'll kind of tie everything in together. And then from there, I can just button everything up and then write some code. So basically all I do is just read the state of that shield pin and when it goes low, I can start rotating the centerpiece. Fortunately, that new pulley size seemed to fix the problem and this thing is working great. I was able to finish this project just in time before heading out of town. I don't know what the next video is that YouTube wants you to watch, but I want you to ignore it and go over to Winston Moy's channel so that you can watch him machine this part out of aluminum. I want to say a huge thanks to my channel members, they got to see this project a week early. I also want to thank the sponsor of these videos because they make it possible for me to build projects like this. That's it for this one, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.